So in this video, we want to add pagination to our website. So let's go back to our project and we want to paginate these posts before sending them to the view. So in Laravel, we have a paginate method that we can use and this would make our job very easy. So we want to say, grab the latest post, but don't get all of them, paginate them by six item, for example, on each page. We can pass a number here and that would be the number of resources on every page. So let's say five and let's go back to our home component and we have this console.log already. Let's see what does this one give us. So let's open the console here and as soon as I reload the page we are going to lose everything here so let's reload it and you notice we are getting a bunch of errors and that's fine so if you scroll up here we get our console.log and the errors that we are getting is because the array that we used in our home component is changed now because we are paginating it so instead of a simple array we have an object that has all these properties and within these properties we have our data which is our posts but you notice it's an array of five and that's because we said we want five on each page we have our links so that is our pagination links and we have other properties that we can use for instance the number of resources on the page for example if we are on page one we are showing from one to five of 32 so now instead of that array we want to use this object so we need to say posts then data to get our posts so let's change this one down here we are mapping over the posts but now we want to say posts that data then map so nothing else would change in here so let's go back to our website and i'm going to push this down so we get our posts back now we want to do a similar job for our pagination links so we are mapping over the data in this section but now we want to create another section and map over the links remember we have a links array that is our pagination links so if i just use the curly brackets and say posts that links and then map and say for each link i want to render maybe an a tag for now and let's just hard code the text link here so if we go back to our project at the very bottom we have the text that is being repeated so if i bring up the console one more time one more time and we inspect the links array you notice each object has three properties so one is active showing if a page is active or not one is the label that is being used for that link and then a url so this is the previous button if we open the second element you notice that the active attribute is true so we are on the first page and the label is one and the url is our domain and then our query which is set to page one so we want to use these properties in our component so for the href we can get rid of these quotations and say link dot url and for the text we can say link dot label and of course this is not correct i just want to show you step by step so back to our website and at the very bottom we have our links let me add some padding so it's easier to see here so on the wrapper i'm just going to add some padding top and bottom and also left and right so here it is so we have our links and if we click on these numbers they actually work so we are on page four up here if we click on the next button we go to page five and the previous one works as well so they are working it's just a matter of a styling and you notice this next and previous buttons they have these weird symbols and that's because these are html symbols and we are rendering it as a text so we need to use the inner html of an element to render those labels and also we are rendering an a tag and that is not what we want for our SPA. So if we click on these links, we are making a server call and we don't want to do that. So instead of an anchor tag, we want to use a link. So make sure it is imported from Inertia React. And then down here, we want to create a link. So instead of closing it like this, we can self-close it since we don't want to use the inner text. We want to use the inner HTML. So first for each link, we want to have an href. The href is going to be link.url. Then we also need a key since this is sort of a loop. So I can say link dot label because that's unique then we need to set the inner html now in vue.js it's quite easy we just use the vhtml directive but in react we don't really have that so instead we have this property called dangerously set inner html but there are ways around it anyway if you don't want to use this attribute anyway we want to set the value of this to an object so i'm going to use another curly brackets within the curly brackets and use double underscore HTML and set the value of it to link.label. 
So if I format my code, it looks much better. Now let's go back to our website. You notice the links are much better now. And if I click on the next button, we go to page four and so on. So let's style these a bit. So I'm gonna use the class name here and add padding one all around, margin left and right one. And for now, let's leave it as it is. So here are our links. Now I want to add some conditional classes to our links. So remember we had an active property that shows if we are on a certain page. So I want to set some conditional classes instead of this. So I'm going to delete this for a moment and use the curly brackets. Then use the back tick since I want to have template string. First, I'm gonna bring back my default classes that would be applied to all the links. Then I'm gonna use dollar sign and then open and close curly brackets to have my JavaScript code within this backticks. And in here, I wanna say if link is active, so using a ternary operator, if link is active, then add the text blue and also font bold. If it is not, so otherwise do nothing. So again, if I format my code, it looks much better. Basically this whole statement for our class name is going to be translated to padding and then margin and then these properties. If the link is active, otherwise it's just going to be these two. So if we go back to our website, we are on page five, therefore our link is blue and the font is bold. If we go to page three, then we see that effect. And if we inspect our site and grab one of these links, you notice for example, this number two has only two classes, but page three has four classes. Now, one more thing I want to add to the links. So if we go back to the homepage, that means we are on page one and this previous button should be disabled or just render something else if the link URL is null. And we have the same problem on the last page as well. So if I go to page seven, this next button should not be a link. So let's see how we can solve this problem. Basically, we want to render a link if the link URL is true. Otherwise, we want to render something else. So this whole statement needs to be a ternary operator. So let's do this. Before rendering anything, I want to check if link URL is true using a question mark. Then I want to render a link. Otherwise, I'm going to add the colon on the next line. I want to render a span. Now this span should have almost the same properties. So I'm going to copy these attributes or properties or props, whatever we want to call them, and paste them here for this span, format my code so it's easier to read, and then modify these attributes. So we need the key, of course, but we don't need the href. So let's delete that. The inner HTML should be the same, so we don't have to change that. And the class name doesn't need to be conditional anymore. So we want to just apply some normal classes. So I can use quotations and say padding one MX one and add some light color. So it would be a muted text. So that's it. Let's go back to our website. Now we are on page seven. You notice this next button is not a button anymore. It's not a link. It's just a text and we can't click on it. It's muted. So it makes sense. If we go to page five, both links would work. If we go to page one, now the previous button is gone is muted. So this is exactly what we want. And of course, it would be a better practice to make this whole thing into a component. So if we had other paginations in other pages, we wouldn't have to repeat ourselves. But anyway, that is how we can get pagination in our Laravel Inertia React app. So instead of getting all the posts in our post controller, we paginate them and then send them to the component. And in our component, we would simply map over those links and then show them to the users so users can navigate between pages. So we already covered one topic and that is listing resources with pagination on our homepage. In the next video, we will talk about creating a resource. So we will add a page here and a form and see how we can use inertial form helper to create resources. So stay tuned and I'll see you at the next one.